I get students that come to me all the time and tell me they want to fix their across the line swing. But it's not always bad to be across the line. I'll get into that uh, more here in a minute. But first, let's understand exactly what across the line means. So across the line is referring to at the top of the swing, if this club is going too much out in front of me, that would be across the line. The line referring to uh, the, the target line. So this would be across the line. So why would that be bad? The reason why that would be bad is that Typically, in a higher handicap golfer, if they get the club going way across the line, that elbow is very, very flared out. And this will typically lead to kind of an over-the-top kind of swing, leading to a lot of slices and, and pulls and chopping down into the ball and things of that nature. Uh, to better golfers who go across the line, typically what will happen is they'll, they'll, they'll start shallowing out the club. But because the club is so far across the line, it's hard to reroute it and get it to where it's in a good position in the early downswing. And then you're going to tend to kind of stand up to continue to get that club to work from the inside. And you're typically going to end up with blocks out to the right, um, some, some hooks sometimes. You typically struggle with thin shots. You'll struggle with consistency. It's just hard to be consistent when uh, in certain situations when you're way across the line. And people go across the line because it feels more powerful. If I can get the, the, the club head, the path of this club head to go further, then I can have more path to help me accelerate the club and it can create more speed. Now this can help you to create more speed, but a lot of times what ends up happening is we get so far across the line that we have to do other things in our, in our swing to kind of get it back on, on route and it ends up kind of killing our speed and killing our consistency. So there are some situations when going across the line is okay and those situations would be a player who has a longer swing. So a player who has a more vertical, more upright, and longer swing. So examples of, of players like this would be Bubba Watson, uh, Fred Couples, John Daly. These are players who have longer swings. They're also major championship winners, and they go across the line at the top. Well, why are they able to go across the line, but some players aren't? The reason is because they have a lot more time to get that club back on plane. They can get it when the lead arm is parallel to the ground in the downswing, they can get it into a good position. That good position would be if I'm going nice and long in my swing, more vertical, nice and long, if I'm across the line here, now I can get this club, I have a lot more time to get this club where I need to be. Lead arm parallel to the ground. What we like to see is we like to see this butt into the club to be pointing a little bit outside of the golf ball. If it's like this, more inside the golf ball, we're gonna have to make some compensations or we're gonna have to really get this club to be working inside late or more from the inside late in the swing. And again, that's gonna make you more dependent on timing uh, in your swing. It's gonna make you less consistent. So folks who are longer with their swing, more upright, are, typically it's gonna be okay. And actually going across the line may help them to shallow out the club because then there's gonna be momentum moving in that direction. But if your swing is shorter and you're across the line, right? Swing is shorter, your swing is more like this, and you go across the line, that's where we get into trouble. That's where we're going to see the players that come over the top and don't, and start down steep and, and shallow it out really late. So if you're a player like that, like a John Ron, for example, he's someone who has a short swing. If he went across the line at the top, I will guarantee you he would not be on the PGA Tour. He's more, he has a short swing, and he has his swing more in a laid off position. It's actually pointed the other direction. That's because he doesn't have a lot of time to get that club on plane. If he has it more laid off in, in this position like this, if he's shorter, that's gonna allow him to get it exactly where it needs to be. And that's why he's able to play so consistent. That's why he's one of the best players in the world. So if you're someone who has a shorter swing, I think more people fall into the category of a, not like a Dustin Johnson or Bubba Watson or John Daly type swing. I think more people fall into the category of shorter swings because flexibility can sometimes be an issue with a lot of players. So if you're someone who's what we call short and across, then I got a drill for you to help you to get into a better position. So it really has a lot to do with the elbows and getting the elbows to work correctly. Typically, if you're a short and across person, what happens is, is that we get a lot of bend in our trail elbow right away. We get this elbow working back behind us right away and it keeps on going and it kind of flares back behind us. We get the hands kind of working more in very, very quickly. So what we want to do is we want to keep this trail arm straighter in the backswing and get the hands working more in front of our chest and then get the elbows working more out that way uh, in, in the uh, 
as we, as we get up to the top in the start of the downswing. Those who are short and across, get the elbows working more behind us. See, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but the elbows are working more in that direction. So what we want to do is grab an alignment stick. You don't have to use an alignment stick. I just think it makes it easy to visualize what's going on. What I want you to do is just take that alignment stick and put it right up against the club like that. And what I'm going to do, and I'll show you from both angles here, uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to lead arm parallel in the backswing. And we get to lead arm parallel, I want your hands in front of your chest. And it may be good to practice in front of a mirror or to practice in front of a camera or something like that so you can kind of see where your hands are from this down the line view. So you're going to go up, go up nice and easy, nice and slow initially and get those hands right in front of your chest. This alignment stick, we want it to be pointing pretty close to our toes here. It can be a little bit out in front of the toes. It, you're basically anywhere between where the ball would be and the toes is going to be fine. So anywhere in that area is going to be fine. But we need to get these hands in front of the chest. Another important note here is that I want my trail arm to have just a little bit of bend in it. Your lead arm is going to have not a lot of bend in it at all, but your trail arm, you want to keep it out away from you. Remember, part of the problem of getting that short in inside is we get too much bend in the right arm or the trail arm that gets behind us and it gets flaring out like that. We want to keep it straighter, right? So lead arm straight, trail arm as straight as you can get it, hands right in, right in front of the chest here. That's where you want it. Now from here, this is the critical move. This is what you have to do to get this club to be in the right position. We need to get our elbows to be pointing, get to where they're moving out toward the target. When we go short and across, the elbows work behind. We need, or not toward the target, toward the ball. We need those elbows working toward the ball. And you can see where this butt end of the club is gonna be pointing because you're gonna have that stick right there. We want that butt end of the club to be pointing more outside the golf ball. And when you get up to the top, it's going to be pointing more uh, to out in front of you instead of behind you this way. So again, go up in front of your chest, trail uh, in front of your chest here, trail arm as straight as you can get it, butt end of the stick pointing somewhere between your feet and the ball. And then from here, as you continue to go up to the top, I need your elbows to be pointing more out toward the ball. And we need to get this button, the stick, to be pointing more out in front of you like that. So now you can see when I'm right here, I'm in a nice laid off position. If I get my elbows working back out that way, I'm going to be in the stick moving more behind you, behind me. I'm going to be in that short and laid off position that's going to cause issues. So we're going to go here. And that's the perfect position. That's like where you see John Rahm, right? Nice laid off position at the top of the swing. And then from there, I just want you to kind of swing nice and slow. Swing nice and slow through there. Now what you can do is now, you know, do a bunch of reps. I'd say 25 reps or so with the stick on there so you can get a good visual of what's going on there. But then remove that. It, it is a little bit hard to swing with that on there. So remove that and kind of do the same thing. Get the hands in front. Pause right here. Continue with the elbows working toward the ball right here. And then from there, swing through into the full finish. Once you start getting comfortable with that, start speeding it up a little bit. All right, start getting here, here, and then start speeding it up, speeding up. Once you start to get a good feel for it, now let's do it in a more fluid rep. So no pauses in the swing now. We're just kind of going up like this and then coming down. And again, more up like this and we're coming down. As you get more and more comfortable with that, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up and get to where you're essentially at full speed with it. Once you're at full speed with it, now we can add the golf ball and try to do it with the golf ball. And I think once you do that, you're going to find that club is going to be in a much better position for you and you're going to be able to stay in your posture. You're going to be able to have, a, you know, get that club in the slot and not have to worry about making compensations in the swing to get it where you want to be later. And you're going to be a lot more consistent with your golf game. All right, so now that we have that club in a much better position at the top of the swing, it's going to make it so much easier to get that club shallowing out in the start of the downswing. If we start down steep, I now have to make compensations in the start of the downswing. They're going to make me flip the club typically. So if we get that club shallowing out, now I don't have to make any compensations. I can stay in my posture and come into impact with lots of forward shaffling. This is what we call the move on the website. It's one of our most popular sections on the website and our most popular drill from this, from this the move section is the tennis racket drill. 
Clay Ballard, the founder of Top Speed Golf, is going to go over a preview of the tennis racket drill in just a second. But if you'd like to see the whole video, it's completely free. All you have to do is click the I card on the screen. If you don't see the I card, no worries. All you have to do is go to the description below, select the link there, and get started on the drill. Keep up the hard work, and I'll talk to you next time. Good player problems. We're going to talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be...